We're going to look at 1 Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and we will read verse 3. The Bible says in the last days there will be doctrines of devils, 1 Timothy chapter 4. And then 2 Corinthians chapter 2 says we are not ignorant of Satan's devices. So it is important that as we enter the last days, more and more we are to be more aware of what Satan's doing in our world to cause destruction. Now, one of the things what Satan's doing this is a warped world we live in, okay? Amen. Because you know what kind of a world we live in? Now, this will look like a good word, and the Bible says it's a good word too, but the world did it in a disgusted, twisted way. This is your world. Love. Now, anything that's not love, they will call you what? Now, you know how the Lord... How the wicked one, do you know how the world's going to use this? Because what's going on, how the world is set up, is that in a way, love is with Satan's crowd. Whereas hate is found in whose crowd? That's what they're doing. You know how the devil's going to do that in the last days? It's going to justify their one world government, one world religion, one world order. New world order, everything is going to be set up. Why? Because you got to find an enemy to hate and let's all work toward unity and love. What is a world's kind of love? It's tolerance. Tolerance of beliefs. Different beliefs. What is love? It's tolerance of sin. Tolerance of sin. If you preach against homosexuality, you're automatically right there. Automatically right there. This is their meaning of love. What's love? What's love is taking out holiness. De-emphasizing holiness. Love is about churches sharing their feelings. That's what it is. That's what it is, sharing their feelings. Please do not share your feelings right here in this church. I want to hear the word of God, not how you feel. Amen. If you heard how I feel every Sunday, you'd be depressed too and you wouldn't come back. Please don't share your feelings right here. We believe in bearing one another's burdens, amen. We believe in praying and caring one another, amen. But we are not the type of church that's going to hear everything from where your goldfish died all the way to all these little nitpicky problems when there are bigger things to take care of in our world today. We're not a matter of we're always going to cry in every service. We're not always going to do a hugging, hugging thing. I was at this charismatic meeting, and then in this charismatic meeting, Benny Hinn was speaking, and when Benny Hinn was speaking, he was saying, all right, uh, in, the middle of the, in the middle of speaking tongues, like what perfect timing, because they were going so much by the emotion of love, see? And in the middle of that, he was like saying, I want you all to hug each other and say, I love you. And I was like, no, please don't do it. And then this woman who was right in front of me, she, she turned around. I was like, don't do it, don't do it. And she's like, I love you. And she was crying and then she hugged me. I was like, oh yeah, yeah like that. And then the thing was, is that now I'm a nice guy, see? So because I'm a nice guy, I, I, I put up with it. My uh, fellow PBI student friends, they weren't that nice. <laughs> when that woman hugged me, she went to the to my friend and then she's like oh, I love you and the guy went like that and then she backed off after that <laughs> but the thing is this the thing is is that I mean look when we greet each other we shake hands we even hug each other we say I love you brother and sister in the Lord but there is this uh, this there is this problem where people think churches are all about squishy wishy yeah. sissy feeling effeminate yeah. that's what they think that's all it is. And then when you see the preacher going like this, yeah. then they all of a sudden they go into shell shock. Yeah. They go they get into shock mode. Their hearts get broken and they automatically put you in this group. That's right. That's true. So what this is is church is sharing their feelings. What this is is actually it's not really a matter about uh, caring one another. This is completely run by emotionalism. Yeah. 
If you think we're hate, if you think we're hate for not having this emotionalism, why can't university professors do that, huh? Why can't liberals do that in their activist meetings and their protests? Don't we, sh when I see them doing that, screaming and holding the sign, don't you think I can say, you're a hate group? If I judge everybody by appearance, by the tone of their voice, I mean, and then the preacher, when he yells and points his finger to his own members, they call that hate. But no, when liberals hold a sign and they go, ah, like, about Trump and whatnot, then they say, it's, a, it's the power of love and tolerance. <laughs> look at 1 Thessalonians 5. That's why look at verse 3. We're all about love, love and peace, love and peace, right? You all heard that phrase, right? Love and peace, love and peace. It's not love and peace. Verse 3, For when they shall say peace and safety, then what? Sudden, Sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. And that's in context in future end times. When they cry out this love and peace, that's why it's bringing what? New world order. And this new world order, it can only last... Seven years at best. It can only last that long. And when seven years at best, it goes downhill. It's what? Destruction. But no, they think that God's crowd is the one that's bringing this destruction. They don't see that they themselves are the one bringing the destruction. That Satan's magnificent plan and attempt to deceive people is to make churches all effeminate and queasy while making the other guys more bold and upfront. That's why we're losing the battle. Because we refuse to raise our swords high, That's right. whereas the liberals and the wicked world out there are raising their swords even higher. Amen. And I'll tell you who's raising their swords even higher than that. It's Muslims. Now, do you know what's even mentally sick? you got to understand what's mentally sick. Is that what's mentally sick is that they would, tr when you bring up Muslim radicals right here, and let's be honest, it's the it's religion of Islam itself, you got to understand. The religion of Islam itself, I mean, you just read that book, man. When you read that book, it talks about those who not be Muslims, you should cut off their hands and cut off their heads, it says. That's what it actually says. Cut off their hands, cut off their heads. And then what they like to do is that when we preach against Islam, you know what they do? When we warn out of love, this religion is not of love because they force conversions, you know what they would automatically do? They would put you into what? You see how sick that is? What's really sick is that they put you here when you're actually showing them that this religion has no love in it and then they put you right here. Who's the sick one now? Who's the one mentally ill? This is a problem here. This is a problem. But when you talk about Christianity love and when these liberals say, no, it's hate, it's hate, it's hate, why can't we put them in the hate group? See this thing? They want to take, they want to abuse their own plane of love and they refuse to have us take that matter fairly. Yeah. These guys are wicked hypocrites and that's how Satan does to brainwash our world. Yeah. And he's working it. It really works. We're going to look at 2 Peter. 2 Peter. The false prophet. Didn't you know that's what he's going to be doing in the last days? It's flattery. It's love, love, love. 2 Peter chapter 2, chapter 2. 2 Peter chapter 2, excuse me. Look at this. How many religions want to be private about their doctrine? You know why? So that it doesn't cause confusion and splits, so that people are ignorant that you don't find their blatant heresy. So they keep it private, their doctrine, and they use flattery to maintain the membership. We don't do that. We make it plain and apparent right here. People walk out in the middle of service, man. We make it plain and apparent right here. You know why we do that? We do that out of love. We show you clearly what we mean by love. And when we love you, we're going to make it clear and plain. These people, they give a distorted, perverted, abstract kind of love. Confused kind of love. 
that they won't tell you clearly what they believe in. 2 Peter 2 verse 1, But there were what? False prophets. Now it's in context of last days. Also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately shall bring in damnable heresies. You see that? Privately. Privately bringing in their heresy. So that you can't tell. So that you can't tell what is going on. You're going to keep reading right here. Uh, who shall privately, who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. See that? They bring upon themselves destructions. Swift destruction, like real close. Boom. Look at verse 3. Uh, no, verse 2, And many shall fall their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with what? Feigned words. Make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Look at that. These people, what they will do is use feigned words to trick you, to keep you inside. We're also going to look at verse... 15. We're going to look at verse 15. Notice right here. Having eyes full of adultery and that cannot cease from sin. Beguiling unstable souls. See that? They're tricking them. And heart they have exercised with covetous practices. Cursed children. Verse 18. For when they speak what? Gray swelling words at verse 18. Of vanity. They allure through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness those that were clean to escape from them who live in error. While they promise them what? Liberty. See that? Liberty! Freedom! We homosexuals have the freedom to get married. Freedom of religion. Freedom to do this. Freedom, freedom, freedom. See that? Freedom. Promising them liberty, liberty, liberty. Freedom of speech, so the news media can say whatever they want, even if it uh, just shows, even if it uh, hurts national security. But then when we have freedom of speech, they say, no, 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 censor that, censor that. You know, hypocritical, wicked liars, man. Wicked liars. You're mad, preacher. Yeah, I'm mad. Because they're lying through their teeth. Because they say freedom. And when we want to put out an equal plane of freedom, come on, equal, equal, equal rights, right? They're lying through their teeth, man. Amen. Verse 19, While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption, for whom a man is overcome of the same as he brought in bondage. So look at right here, verse 18, they speak great swelling words of vanity. And notice that in verse 1, it's what? False prophet. How do you think the false prophet is going to deceive the people? In this new world order. He's going to be like other false prophets. Why else was he given the title false prophet? Great swelling words. And through that deceive the people. Promise them liberty. And what they're going to do is that. To maintain this world of love. Let's have a world full of love. And people who refuse to join this world full of love. And who are a threat to this world of love. We've got to eradicate them. This hate group. Yeah. And that's why the Bible says that their heads are cut off. What religion believes in cutting off the heads of people who don't join their program? It's Islam. It's Islam. It's Muslims. Why would their book say to cut off their hands? In the Mark of the Beast system, you have it in your hand, right hand, or right here on your head. What religion would teach that kind of stuff? They're, remember, folks, this is in the name of love now. I mean, after all, they're trying to make them look like lovely people. This is a lovely religion, right? This is a wicked world we live in. As Jesus Christ said, and the Bible says, when they declare peace, they're going to bring in destruction. One more verse, and then we'll call it a day. Shall we look at Daniel? One more verse, and let's call it a day. Look at Daniel. That's what the Antichrist is going to do. Look at Daniel chapter 11. Daniel chapter 11. Verse 21. Daniel 11, 21. False prophet will use great swelling words. Not only that, it's the Antichrist. But since I said this is the last verse, I want to put in one more person. Who else is going to bring in great swelling words? Satan. There's your satanic trinity right there. 
That's why the first word, the very first speech Satan gave, you know what it was? Positive, positive, positive. Positive, positive, positive. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Positive, 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 positive. Then it what? Brings destruction. Great destruction. Daniel chapter 11, verse 21. And in his estate shall stand up a vile person. There's the Antichrist. Vile, right? He's not good. He's vile. To whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom. But he shall come in what? Peaceably. Oh, I'm all for peace. I'm all for peace. No, you're not. And obtain the kingdom by what? Flatteries. Flatteries. All you need is love. All you need is love, love. Love is all you need. And then... <laughs> That's what's going to happen at the tribulation. Bunch of liars, wicked liars, deceivers. And they want to make your God, see, this kind of God they want, a distorted, vile kind of God. But when we preach about a God who loved them enough to die for their sins and that's the only way to heaven, they call that love or hate? Hate. Sick, sick, mentally sick world. Even so come Lord Jesus. Amen.